Hey folks, it's Nick Granville here. So this is the second part in this funk guitar series of lessons. Um, funk's a big topic, so I thought it's probably worth addressing in a series of lessons. So today I wanted to talk about single note funk lines. So single note stuff, you know, um, or double note sometimes I'll put in the same category, but not rhythm guitar, so to speak. When I was learning to play, we were always told to call this bubblegum funk. To me, I've never liked that term. It's sort of, it's more than bubblegum pop sort of songs, isn't it? Um, but you get the idea. You know, things like... You know, that Michael Jackson thing, or Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, or any of those kinds of things. Or... And, and what's going on there is I'm using my pick and I'm actually palm muting a little bit. It's 16th note driven, so 1E and a 2 e and a 3 and a 4 e and a. And then da 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 da. And um, I'm just palm muting and I'm accenting those notes. And occasionally I'll put in chords like that. Sometimes I'll use double stops. Right? Or... So, for me, the, the kind of sweet spot is the middle two strings. You don't have to stick to them, but the middle two strings seems to be your best spot to go. The bottom two strings can kind of get mushy, get in the way of the bass. Top two strings can get in the way of the melody. Sweet spot is the middle two strings. And wherever possible, I try and aim for the G string if I can. Because you see, it just sounds different on the D. Okay, if I go. And I can play that on this set of strings. Um, so for me, that's sort of the sweet spot, right? In terms of guitar tone, almost always I'm going to run on those two pickups. Uh, this guitar is wired a little differently when it's in the middle setting. It's not the middle pickup. It's actually those two like a Telecaster. So it's almost always that. Just one reason I like playing this guitar, it can do that. But then I also will use those two pickups like a Strat if I want to do that Prince type thing. It's a little sweeter. As opposed to. But that's mostly where I live on this guitar. I don't really use neck pickup. To me it's too warm. The setting here is okay sometimes if it's feeling if the amp's really bright. I find when I use that setting there between the neck and the middle, um, I tend to listen back to recordings or whatever and the guitar just doesn't cut through as well. I find that's the sweet spot. Um, and then that one, sometimes I'll use the bridge pickup, but very rarely. If I use it, I tend to go right down by the bridge here. Like Jimmy James, if you haven't checked out Jimmy James, that dude's bad. He's, I love his playing. Um, but, you know, play down here, bridge pickup. You know, um... And that's kind of, uh, usually when I'm doing that, I'm emulating a keyboard more than a guitar. You know, like some of those Herbie Hancock type things. Uh, chameleon, you know, for example. And then it has... You know, that thing which is played on a keyboard, but doesn't sound right. That's too sweet. It really needs to be that and that 
and pull it down by the bridge like I mentioned. But anyway, that's sort of how I get to the sound that I'm going for. Um, like I said, I tend to aim for the G string or the D string as much as possible. The middle two. Sometimes I'll put chords in a mic. It all depends on what else is going on around me. Um, if the band's really busy, then I'll play very sparse. Um, if the usually it comes down to the keyboard player and the bass player for me most of the time. Um, you know, if the keyboard player is playing lots of double-handed stuff, you know, and getting really funky with it, like a clav type part, then I'll play less and I'll try and contrast that. If the keyboard player is playing low, I play high. If I'm playing high, uh, sorry, if they play high, I'll play low. If they play busy, I'll play sparse. If they play sparse, I'll play busy. That sort of thing, you know, with these things. Um, so that's sort of conceptually how I look at single note funk. So in terms of note choices, what I try and do is I try and find notes that kind of go through progression. So this example here is a good one because I'm just going to play the C note. It's going to have that kind of going through it. Or you can hear the difference between the wound string and the non-wound. So yeah, I'll, I'll tend to go for that um, through a part. Here's an example. <laughs> So here's another example of something a little different. This time I'm going to hit a few more chords. I'll hit the G, uh, the chords of C minor, G minor, and F minor, and I'll go. And I kind of hit those double stops in amongst it, right? Sometimes I'll play it up here. Depends, you know. So here's another example. And so what I'm always looking for is like, what are the things that I can find the least amount of notes and get the most rhythm with it going? So for me, like if I have a chord progression like E minor seven to A seven sus, the D note is just crying out to me for it. So I wouldn't normally play it with the bass line like, but that uh, did that just so you could hear. And so I had a progression that went say D, uh, E minor seven, A seven sus, D minor seven, G seven. Then I'll just kind of pedal a D seven note through it. What happens when you have a chord progression that doesn't kind of all fit in the same key? This next track is by my friend Simon King, um, and it's a backing track that he made. He plays drums, bass, guitar, and keyboard on it, so check it out. You can download it from his Bandcamp, I think, or his website. Um, he's a bad dude. He's awesome. You should check him out, and his backing tracks are fantastic. So this one goes F minor, and then the next chord is A flat minor, and C7. C7 sharp 9 in this instance. Right, so F minor, you could say there's a C note there, right? But my next chord has to have a C flat, right? Or a B natural, whichever way you want to look at it. And then my next chord has a B flat. So maybe I'll go. It's kind of uninteresting though, right? To me, that, that sort of just sounds. It's, there's nothing there. So a better idea might be to go to an A flat, the A flat note, right, which is the next chord tone. And there's the note that fits with that chord and then maybe something like that. So this will, I'll show you in this example that's coming up now.
And finally, I'll just talk a little bit about what I do in terms of my feet and all that sort of stuff. So my feet, what I'm doing is I'm actually tapping my foot. Um, starting with the right foot, I'll tap my foot and I tap it on all, all the four quarter notes, right? And a good way to work on this is just to do that. Right, so I'm just tapping my right foot then and then do the same thing but tap your left foot. And then try both. Right, and that's just a few different ways to kind of work on your groove. Um, you know, the, the particularly between the two sides, it's it, you're trying to feel the rhythm in certain different ways. So for the next lesson, what I'm going to look at is sort of some special effect things that I do, particularly with the whammy bar and that sort of stuff in a funk context, um, and those sort of sounds. A future lesson, I'll also talk about some players to check out, and maybe we'll do a bit of a deep dive on some of the more modern players and people like that, because, you know, I can talk about this music all I want, but, you know, the better thing for you to do is to listen to this music, and then you'll have a, an understanding of how it's supposed to go. And there's some people doing some fantastic stuff with funk music around now, um, and then definitely was in the 70s right through, you know, David Williams to, um, you know, Catfish Collins and all kinds of people like that we'll talk about. Um... Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Um, remember to subscribe. It really helps my channel. Um, I'm not someone who posts every week. I post when I get time to. Sometimes I just get crazy busy. I've just been on tour with a Carol King show. Uh, and I'm just about to start the show Kinky Boots. And I'll be doing that for a month. Um, eight shows a week. So it's going to get busy. But I post when I can, as soon as I can. Um, so if you're subscribed, then you'll get it. You're, you're more likely to see those. And you won't miss out when the next lot of lessons and stuff come. Um, give this lesson a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, share it with anyone you can think of. All that stuff helps, you know, it's a small thing to do and uh, it really helps me out with building the channel because, um, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to do more on this and, uh, yeah, by you um, showing me that, that this is useful, it shows me that to do more of them. Um, anyway, hope everybody's well. Thanks for tuning in and I will talk to you soon. Cheers.